it, it could have kept him productive and successful, man. And he decided that he was done. Yeah. And he never regretted it. He never looked back. He found other things in life. I don't know too much about him. I was reading about him a little bit. He was part of, you know, he grew up in, what was it? I wrote it down somewhere. Where the hell is it? Slab Fork, West Virginia in 1938. And I don't know that town. I don't know West Virginia. I know he was, uh, he grew up in in pretty much uh, a rural town where he experienced, obviously, like so many people did, segregation, racism. You know, his grandfather had been born into slavery. Yeah. You know, he had done military service. Uh, I found out he was a, a aircraft mechanic in the Navy. I mean, he had a, he basically had a very full background before he entered music. Right, that's right, what right, I'm right. saying. So, you know, I don't even know how into music he was growing up. You know, I, I don't know that he was. But, you know, yesterday, I think was it yesterday or two days ago, I, I posted it. And then I got to thinking, I was like, you know what, this guy is, these two songs, I mean, two or three, he had like basically like, what, three hits? Ain't no sunshine. Yeah, uh, and I'm like, on you know, me. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I didn't realize <clears throat> just the two of us. Maybe he wrote that. Was it the was it a different? Or is that a different version of the song? I actually just looked it up right now. I don't know that it's the same yeah, it's song. Are we talking about was it Grover Washington or was it? Yeah, yeah, James, that's it. Was it Grover that's, Washington that made that? Associated Acts, Grover Washington Jr. Yeah. All right, because I was going to say, yeah, maybe he had a writing credit on it. In the, in the overall big picture of it, you know, he was, I mean, was he known for those songs? Yeah, he is, you know, he he's known for those songs. They were big hits, you know. Uh, but I don't, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm cheapening things when we call them hits because lots of shitty songs become hits, yeah. you know. But they were songs that, you know, they became completely ingrained in everything that is best and decent about humanity, I'd say. Nothing offers uplift and hope the way Lean on Me does. You know what I mean? And they're, yeah. they're, that, and that's why it's so fucking universal, man. And on the you flip know? side of that, nothing really says how soulful and sorrowful you can be with uh, Ain't No Sunshine. How, yeah. how how down in that rut you can really be, <clears throat> especially over heartache. Yeah. Which is, which is 90% of popular music, I think. There's, there's, yeah. There, there's Still some heartache in there. Those songs were more than just hits, man. It's like Dylan said, you know, in this in this age of fiberglass, I'm searching for a gem. And yeah. uh, I think that's what we had in him, man. You know, the guy was an American treasure, man, I'd go as far to say. Again, I didn't know all that much about him or his career, you know, but I definitely wanted to get that in there before we... Yeah, before sure. we moved on. And, we, and I know you said, you know, the death cast. We always get the, the label for that. Yeah. But on, 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 on the flip, People are dropping death, man. But on, the, on, the flip side of, of the de- on the flip side of the death part, uh, I'm going to go with uh, the new Pearl Jam record was just released. And, you know, right now I'm still listening to it. So, you know, I have it. We'll see. I, I, I got to listen a little bit more. The, the, the first two songs, I, uh, one I have kind of mixed reviews on, and the other one I do like a lot. So yeah, you see, got you. You got the whole. You got the whole thing. Like you, yeah, I got the whole record. You listen to it. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I with, need a couple more nights at work. That? It's like I said. The first. I really didn't listen to the whole record yet. I need some. some okay. Okay. To, I only listened to about two tracks, and they're the two that were released: uh, "Super Blood Wolf Moon," which I kind of enjoy, and "Dance of the Clairvoyance," which is a, a really different. Song for Pearl Is Jam. that the one I posted a few? I posted one a few weeks ago, man, and I was and I was saying something to the effect of because it it struck me as Pearl Jam finally leaving their comfort zone and doing something that was a little bit it was a beat that they you don't really hear too much. It was it almost sound like a dance beat. Is that the one I'm thinking of? Yep, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. So we'll get a full Rock Under Fire. You'll have the full official Rock Under Fire review next week. I don't know if it'll be Rock Under Fire's <laughs> review, but it'll be my review. <laughs> yeah, well, that's all. Well, you are you are a voice of the podcast. Man. Well, I don't. I, no, I agree. I, I, and we both are. I don't want to go saying that Rock Under Fire puts the well thumbs up or your, thumbs it's, down. It's Pat on Ivanitsky's <laughs> Pat, Pat Ivanitsky's uh, review. 
yeah. to the Rock Under Fire podcast. It's kind of like John Perilla is doing uh, his review for the New York Times or, uh, you know, uh, what, what was it? You know, Dave Marsh reviewing something for Rolling Stones. Uh, yeah. Put your Pro stamp shot. on it. Throw a shot out there to our, our guy Jay Lustig, too. And and I won't and I'll and I'll just make the disclaimer saying that this is Patrick Ivanitsky's review. It doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> that Mike Rico agrees with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, or this doesn't speak for the Rock Under Fire podcast itself. But we'll put Patrick Ivanitsky out there. But anyway, so yeah, it's it's you know I I trust your judgment on Pearl Jam, man. Yeah, that, I, I mean, far more than mine, man, because you followed you followed them. Pretty much the whole time, I lost touch with them after Yield. Yeah, that was a long time. So you ago. know, you know what's what and what, uh, uh, I don't know, valid assessment of what the, what this album is and, you know, versus what it's not and all that stuff. So I mean, I fair. can say, yeah, I like it. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fair enough. Now that it's April, I was I was talking to Nicole about a week ago. She was on our our, our she was a guest on our show about three years ago. Yeah, that that Nicole. Yeah. And, you know, that night when we were all out, you know, for Rob's party, that was February 29th. And at that point in time, they had just announced the first person to die of this thing, right? Everything was still open. Nothing was canceled yet. Yeah, and sure. she asked me at this, she asked me at the party, like, you know, she, she said, you know, what, what's your take on this whole virus thing? And I said, uh, you know, I, I really hope I'm wrong. You know, and I remember thinking like this. I mean, tomorrow's what? March 1st? And it was, you know, March 1st was the next day. And I think I said, uh, I, I think that by the end of March, we're going to be a much different country. There's there's not going to be anything like in a sense, there's the, all the stuff about the primaries, everything's going to be gone. There's going to be no music, there's going to be no sports. Gonna, the only thing we're going to be talking about on the news is going to be one story. Everything's going to be reduced to one story by the end of March. She was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know, I said, but, the, but, you know, I keep thinking, I keep saying like, I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. So even though it's been like 24 seven gloom and doom all over the news, man, it's that, you know, pop culture has stopped, has not stopped evolving. And no, no. what I mean by that is that like in the face of all this bullshit, people now have a second thing to post about. And every time I go on Facebook or something, besides the virus, now all we see is this thing with the tiger. What is this tiger thing? Like, please clue me in on this. Like, out of nowhere, people are talking about the tiger. Like, is, it, is this like a tiger in a movie? Like, is it a show? Like, what the fuck with the tiger? It's a guy who... Do you, first of all, you have Netflix, correct? I do. Okay, well, first of all, I'm going to highly recommend you watch the, the it's seven episodes. You can binge it quickly, and you will binge it quickly because it's that addicting. Um, really? Basically, yeah, it's called Tiger King. And basically, it, um, yeah, how do I explain this in a nutshell without giving anything away to you? A man from Oklahoma is gay. He owns tigers. He turns straight men gay, or to have them think that they're gay through meth. He, and he owns a zoo. Um, but they were going to make a reality television show about him, and there's a murder for hire suspense link all throughout. <laughs> Does that pique your interest at all? <laughs> because that's really what it is. There's, and these people exist in our world. That, that's my. I, I don't want to give anything away. I highly recommend you watch it. You know, it seems to have gotten people's minds off of the the whole situation, man. That's that's what like I was just like out of nowhere, everybody was like again, everybody was posting about the the, the virus thing, you know. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, it's like wow, we're like back living in like TV sitcom world or whatever it was. I was like, what is this thing? I, I keep seeing jokes about the tiger, so I was like, all right, let me ask Pat. <laughs> you'll you'll understand every single meme you have seen on Facebook instantly after you watch it. I, I can't you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like what was that like? There was there was like a monkey in a zoo, and the kid got too close to the monkey or something, or they shot the monkey or something happened with the monkey or in, in some like I think it was like Cincinnati or something in it was a, a zoo. Gorilla. About was a gorilla. yeah, maybe four years ago. Yeah, it was a gorilla, Harambe. Yes, and yes, the, yes. The, the gorilla was actually showing signs of its natural instinct to grab the child and kind of take it away from the right, people. Right, 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 right. Unfortunately, the child was killed and they put the gorilla down. 
Okay, all right. Because I remember that became like for whatever reason everybody was talking about that, and I was like, okay, what's up with the monkey? You know, <laughs> it's just like or the gorilla or whatever. Settle, s- settle down there for a second, Charlton Heston. <laughs> it was a gorilla. <laughs> it was a damn dirty ape. <laughs> the monkey. <laughs> the monkey. <laughs> Say King Kong, man. The monkey. The monkey, yeah. The giant goddamn monkey on the World Trade Center. <laughs> it's a good monkey. So, oh man. Like I said in the beginning, I know we wanted to do some like this or that or country head type situations. <laughs> um, that I, I have to jump back into the Van Halen thing because that's what led me to my first like kind of country or head. And it's interesting because it came up last week. And mine would be album. It would be because we talked about it briefly. Uh-huh. Um, a, a favorite album, Eat 'Em and Smile, or the Fifty mm-hmm. One Fifty record. That would be it, my. Uh, that, that would be, be my gun, go-to. That's, yeah. your gun to, that's your gun to the head for me. Yeah, yeah. Eat him, eat him and smile, and or 5150. Yeah, and my basis is on it. On that, my basis of it was that we discussed um, eat him and smile being like a, 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 a staying with the curve of a Van Halen record, whereas 5150 uh, is completely different. All right, you're going to be surprised at my answer, man. Okay. Uh, my answer is 5150. Mine is and as well. I will tell you why, man. Eat him and smile. I, or, you know, we already kind of both agree. We established that it's probably a better Van Halen record if we're talking what Van Halen was, right? You know, and had they continued into '86, and Eat him and smile has it's definitely uh, has it, it sound. It's more of a Van Halen record, right? That said, I played Fifty One Fifty a lot more than I played Eat him and smile. I think Fifty One Fifty cohesively beginning to end is a much better album. Then Eat 'em and Smile. It doesn't have Ladies Night in Buffalo because I like Ladies Night in Buffalo better than anything on both albums. Even you know it comes from Dave's album. Sure. But I'd have to go with Fifty One Fifty on this one. Yeah, I, I agree. I, and for probably every single point you hit on, um, Dave still had like that carnival esque persona. Whereas I think the fifty one fifty record was just smarter. Um it, it, it's it's a it's an Eddie Van Halen record. It's you know, it was him coming into his own. Granted people hate the keyboard sound. Some of that stuff I really did enjoy. It was him really fine tuning that after eighty four, you know, after like nineteen eighty four, where he just kind of started playing around with it and introducing it. He really kinda of, Honed his craft, I think, on, on fifty one fifty, and it was it, it was an Eddie Van Halen record. Oh, and and I also think of it as a Sammy record. I when I was listening back to the to the show last week, that's fair uh, enough. I forgot that I said that too, and I said, "Well, I hope people know what I mean," because when I said, "Well, it's a Sammy record," it's I said it's one of Sammy's best records. I hope people realize that I was not just talking about in Van Halen. I meant all. Around. All of his records, you know, yeah. going back to Montrose, man. The, the dude, um, peak, he was definitely peaking. You're, you're, it you're... was one of the best things he was ever involved with was fifty mm-hmm. on fifty. So yeah, you know, I mean, good enough is, I mean, you know, it's that's 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 a Sammy song, man. <laughs> you know, that's that's you, you know, summer night, summer nights is a Sammy song. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it, it's it, a whole the whole. <laughs> I mean, it's a summertime record. You know, yeah, it, man. It, it, the music was designed for the sound. It, it's just unquestionably. Uh, for everything, everything that you said about it last week, and for the same reasons in your when you first reviewed that book, man, about a year or two ago, when Monk's book came out, mm-hmm. uh, Noel Monk's book, that driving down, you know, the, the well, in our case, the the Jersey, the, the the Parkway headed down the shore with the top down, you know, it's the you know our equivalent of the Pacific Coast Highway, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. but uh, the East Coast equivalent. But it's got that vibe, man, that summery vibe. And uh, again, although I did say there are some things about it that sound dated to me, the other thing is undeniable that those elements, you don't extract that out of it. You know, 5150 is one of those records. Mm. Just great summer sounding rock and roll, man. Yeah. 102.7 WNEW is cranking that record, man. Yeah, Uh yeah. I got my Van Halen fix out. I, I you know, since straight. you said Van Halen, and we're going to stick with Van Halen, really, mm-hmm. you know, briefly, man, because no, because this was, uh, I, I did throw this one in there, based, 
you know, coming off of our Van Halen discussion, and I don't remember if this was, I don't think we necessarily did this as gun to the head when uh, um, Jim and Eric were on the show. Well, what was it? I mean, I guess that was a, that was a few years back too. Sure. When we were talking about Van Halen, but the question is, fair warning or Van Halen one? Fair warning. It's not even, it, it, fair warning is it's, it's the Van Halen record in their entire catalog, in my opinion. Maybe so I, I know of, I can think of two people at least that agree with me. Not only is it their greatest record, it is the the probably best guitar work Eddie. Van Halen has ever done in his life. I don't know if he'll ever rep- re- reproduce that again. It's just from from front to back, I can listen to that record over and over and over again. I love it that much. Every, every single song on it, Dirty Movies, Sinner Swing. I, it's just it's to me, it's the perfect album. Mm. It's it or I mean, obviously, let me rephrase that. It is one of the perfect albums in history. It, it, it's that good of a record. I don't want to say it's the perfect album. I think there's a record that's the perfect album, but I, I really just, I, fair warning, I, I don't even have to second guess it. It just rolls right off my mouth. All right. You? Um, you know what? It, it uh, Fair warning, you know, it's for the same reasons that you can't reproduce a Jackson Pollock drip painting, man, because there, it's about the moment and it's about like you said, you you don't know if Eddie can recreate some of the shit that he did on that record. Uh, guitar wise, he broke ground. This is where Eddie Van Halen broke even further ground than what he was doing on the first record. Mm-hmm. Uh, I agree with that, man. Uh, I gotta go with the first Van Halen record. Uh, I think I said, man. I don't know. I don't remember what exactly what we were talking about in the context of Van Halen, but I remember we all agreed that you know Van Halen fans all agree, seem to always agree, especially guitarists, that Fair Warning is their best record. You know, there's always this consensus among Van Halen fans, you know, and then everybody else kind of always says, well, the first Van Halen. Oh, yeah, well, you and me, we did a show. We did an entire show on the first Van Halen album. That's he right. Even said it, he even said it in the book that he felt that uh, Fair Warning was their, their best work. Yeah, yeah. My pick, I, I like, I have to go with Van Halen, with the first Van Halen over Fair Warning. Just because I was never a fan growing up. I didn't really, really appreciate Van Halen until like the last, I don't know, 20 years. Mm-hmm. Until probably after I was, I don't know, after in my 30s, you know, wow. uh, where I really went back. And I mean, I liked them. I've always liked them. But I was never a fan, you know. There was, uh, I wasn't really buying their albums when they were coming out. I, I think 5150 was actually the first Van Halen, first, the first Van Halen album I ever actually went out and bought when it was new. Whoa. You know, everything else I went and bought years later. So if I had Van Halen in my collection as a kid, it was because I was recording somebody's record. I was I was bring, I was borrowing their albums and recording them onto cassettes. Yeah. You know? Because I didn't care enough about them. Right, so, right, right, right. The yeah, old bootleg was, days. <laughs> yeah. So but Van Halen won. I that's the one that I was always kind of uh, groundbreaker. It it broke ground. It it it's just, for it's what was just to come. pound for pound, man. You know, song for song. Uh, I think Van Halen one is uh, definitely the better album. Fair Warning has great moments on it. Fair Warning has some definitely great live staples. It's much more laid back. It's far less commercial. Yeah, that uh, without a doubt, it's very not. And that work that that has a lot working for it in its favor because of that. You know, because a lot of times commerciality kills a record. By by just having it be overplayed on you know things like radio and MTV. Well, Unchained, I guess, is a little overplayed. But you know, it, it, Fair Warning also came out just prior to MTV, and about a year before everybody had MTV. Yeah, and like you, you can know? see, like hear about it later. There's a promotional thing that they did for it, and they used to play that as a video on MTV. Yeah. We get, Dave had like these red and white spandex on, and he was jumping around. And yeah, that's what they were playing as like a. Uh, but you know, it was very low budget at that point. People were making videos 
more than uh, they were, they cared more about videos than they cared about music. I think some of these people um, that came out in that era. So they, they, were, they became the equivalent of singles. Yeah, they they you know, and they were making good videos. Money, they were throwing money at videos. Where here comes Van Halen, they were kind of just doing a promotional thing for the record, more or less. And they were like, yeah, let's let's throw it up on MTV. It looks like a live performance. Yeah, yeah. That's what you know, they were. When, yeah, and then when Van Halen finally got on the video train, in truth, Van Halen essence, they took it a step further. I mean, some of their videos are just you know they're, they're like these little mini. Sweet Stooges movies, you know what I mean? I loved it. Like Hot for Teacher, what a great video that is, man. That's a great music video. And Dave, Definitely. you know, then Dave went split, when Dave split, he took that even further with the Eat and Smile videos. Yeah, he kept up that tradition of what yeah. they what he he knew how to work MTV. You know, he, he got did. the most out of MTV. Van Halen, uh, when they put out Fifty One Fifty, I don't even think they had a video. I don't know, did they even make videos for that. Yeah, album? they did. They did. There's a dreams I know was made to um, like the Blue Angels flying, the, the airplanes flying. That was it, that. That was an official video from them. That's the video. Yeah, that's a, like when you look up a Van Halen for that song. I think that's the video. It's got the, the planes flying and shit. Oh, see, I didn't even know. I didn't even know that that was their video. I and thought, I thought Nights, somebody else. Summer nights they have a like a live performance of it. When um, they when they put out that live without a net or something. No, I think, I think it was from that record because Summer Nights they it, it was released as a single. I think it's from that record. It's just them kind of playing it, live. Oh, really? So it's like yeah. a studio version synced on top of uh, dubbed on top of a live. Yeah, 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 kind of like that. Um, what do you got next? I do have another one. This is only, I only thought of two. Okay. Um, and this one is going to be Back in Black or Highway to Hell records. Again, staying with records. And this oh. is a band. This is a band that you know I'm not really a huge fan of. Right. Yeah. You know, you know I, I, I'm not. And um, my reasoning is, is, is you know, I, I like the Bon Scott era, hands down. It was there was something different. It was it was definitely something different. And then by the time they got Brian Johnson, it just seemed like everything sounded the same. And I think that's what kind of threw me off. I do like Back in Black. But it, it just kind of threw me off. But I'm going to go with the, the Bon Scott era stuff. You just can't touch it. It's just it's really sacred. And there was a, his, the the uniqueness of his voice. It was it was um, it, it was there were some really special moments from those early ACDC records. I'll go Highway to Hell too. It, it, yeah. it, my my favorite ACDC is uh, I'm weird, but I like the first three. Albums the best. Mm-hmm. I mean, my fave, my favorite ACDC record is the first one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll, but I'll go highway to, highway to hell on this one. Yeah, um, high voltage. Um, but right. yeah, I'll go I, highway I, to I, hell. I, yeah. No, no, no. High voltage is the first one. Right, right, right. Uh, high highway to hell. I'll take definitely over back in black. I mean, uh, just uh, back in black is one of those albums that like it, it's kind of like. Um, it's like you two, the Joshua Tree, where you have to skip over a, a couple, couple songs, <laughs> a yeah. couple songs before yeah. it gets good because you're yeah. so sick and tired of hearing the, what 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 FM radio killed. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's it is an undeniably great album. I, you know, any band would kill to have any of those, you know, the, the, the title track or "You Shook Me All Night Long" mm-hmm. or uh, "Hell's Bells." I mean, they're they're just monstrous classics. Even Billy Billy Joel was doing Hell's Bells a few weeks, yeah. a few years back. They did it. They did it the night I saw him. His, did he? His band, yeah, his band is fucking tremendous, man. Yeah, Billy, Joel, Billy Joel's band at the Garden for these at monthly shows just forget about it. They're lights out. They're they're second only to the E Street Band. I mean, really, they're that good. Maybe maybe like Prince New Power Generation because later Prince stuff like the New Power Generation that that, that band was just. There was just some tight, tight, tight rhythmic funk soul. Just unbelievable, some of those records that he put did with them. I guess I kind of inadvertently went on Billy Joel, man, and I was talking to about Billy Joel because he's actually my next one. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, this is the inevitable Billy Joel album question because it comes down to his probably his two most well-known, two most associated with uh, albums 
in his entire in his career, man. The back to back masterpieces, The Stranger or Fifty Second Street. Mm. So you're gonna make me think a little bit more on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna make me think on this one, man. The Stranger brings back like a lot of like deep rooted memories for me, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with that one. I, I am going to go with The Stranger. Um, there's just, I, I don't know, there's just so much on that record. Even the, the whistling in in The Stranger, moving out, yeah. uh, Jesus Christ, only the good die young. Yeah. But you are. I mean, I, it's just, to me, that was, it, it's just, it's, there were some moments in my life where I was, it, the album was well released already. It was, you know, obviously it was what seventy seven or seventy eight, something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, so in my, I was already an adult, but it just brings me. You know, there was a girl that I was dating, and that record we were just heavily listening to it, and there were other people that we were hanging out with. I was in North Carolina at that at at, the, at this time, and just this group of people that we we all like kind of always listened to that album, and it just brings me to that place in time, and it, it's. Right, okay, right. right. I, it, it, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with that one. I mean, the, the 50, I mean, not like Fifty Second Street is a horrible fucking record because it's not. Um, I, yeah, Big man. Shot, it, Big Shot might be one of my favorite songs by him of all time. I'll tell you what, man. If not if, second. If, if you if you all the masterpieces in music, man, including the Beatles and the Stones and Dylan and 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 the great albums that just just all of the masterpieces of of the entire rock and roll spectrum man had had 50 second street and stranger been a double album it would have been the greatest fucking by far the greatest fucking record ever made i think of them as twins because they both kind of anchor or the anchor what's the fucking word they're the, they're think of like that like like bookends from the from from like September to September, like seventy seven to seventy eight, and they kind of uh, where, where Billy Joel kind of opens seventy eight on the success of uh, the Stranger, and he closes seventy eight on the success of Fifty Second Street, right? Mm. Uh, with the with the exception of maybe like the RSO label, which like every fucking big album and hit song was on the RSO label. Uh, in 1978, between Andy Gibb and the Bee Gees and the Crease soundtrack and the Saturday Night Fever yeah, soundtrack, yeah, sure. you know. Uh, but besides that, man, I mean, Billy Joel pretty much owned 1978. You know, besides all of the RSO songs, yeah. You know, by all, by whatever bands I already mentioned. Yeah. Uh, so with me, it kind of like I think of them as twins. And I had to really go song for song on this one, man. Like, I was thinking about this. And for years, man, I was never able to answer that question. It's like my own question, but I always thought about it. Like, if I had to really pick between The Stranger and 52nd Street. So uh, here's the way, I, the way I think about it, man. And I've got, you know, I've got, this, I've got the lists in front of my face, man. It's one of the benefits <laughs> of doing this at home because my computer's in front of me. But yeah, I, just, uh, I, mean, I just got, rattled, off, I rattled off a few songs. And, and, you know, I mean, just from you're, memory, you're gonna, yeah. Yeah, you're going to go song for song here, just I like. No, well, I mean, I, I'll i try to not to make it too long, but, I mean, yeah, you got Moving Out, man, one of the greatest openers, I mean, mm-hmm. possibly the greatest opener of his, of his catalog, The Stranger Itself, the title track, one of my very favorite songs, not just by him, but, but ever. Uh, and then you've got a couple of schmaltzy, you know, just the way you are, scenes from an Italian restaurant, man. Scenes from an Italian restaurant makes me gag. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, I, you know, yeah, is it a masterpiece song? It was well-crafted you know, song. I, yeah. need to pause, I need to pause you right there. You know why? Because you've heard way too many people sing that at karaoke. <laughs> That's ruined that. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody sing that song, man. Oh, I've but, heard people sing that, and they've ruined it for me, because I do like the song a lot. I don't know, man. I, maybe maybe I go outside or something, but uh, but then, you know, uh, Vienna is a great album mm. song that was never a hit, so yeah, Vienna gets another check in, in, in you know, that column of, you know, great, man. Only the Good Die Young, that's a song that I've probably worn out in karaoke. Uh, it's uh, song. it's always my go-to, it's one of my go-to songs when I can't think of anything else and I'm just kind of at a, my just like total, you know, 
when Bill is waiting for something and I can't come up with something, so I either go to that or, or I go to refugee, uh, probably both to a fault at this point. So, yeah, Only the Good Die Young, one of my favorite songs ever, my favorite song on, on the album. She's Always a Woman, and it's a ballad. I, I kind of never was a fan of it. Uh, and then I have the, the, what I think of as kind of clunkers, man, that it's not that they suck. It's not that I don't like them, but they're just not up to the level of the other songs. And let's get it right the first time. And everybody is a dream. So uh, in in with The Stranger, man, it has a couple of things working against it when I put it up against 52nd Street. Because 52nd Street, man, uh, is solid. Big Shot, Honesty, which is kind of like, uh, it's not... I know there's one other one. He's a it's piano man one after all, so he, you know he's yeah. going to have songs like that. And always yeah. the woman, he, he's going to have those. He's, he's a piano guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's just, uh, the balladeer, if you will. And, and you know, I mean, it's some great wedding. He's done uh, Some of that stuff is really powerful, like wedding music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, My Life, a great song. Great, it's a little overplayed, but it's, you know, you really hear his Beatles influence in there. Yeah, oh, it's heavy. Plus, that was, yeah. that, that was the... Uh, wasn't that the soundtrack for the, that TV show with Tom Hanks? Yeah, Bosom Buddies. Bosom Buddies, right. I think they yeah. used it. I think they licensed it. Yeah, really they licensed after. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, my life is, I mean, we take that song for granted because it's so overplayed. And we say, yeah, you know, it's kind of was one of his more schmaltzy songs because he got this, like, schmaltzy section of his of his, of his his songs where, you know, you can just, like, put it into the schmaltzy folder. You know, and uh, you know, my life is probably the best one out of this. Probably the ones that I can take the most. Probably just because it reminds me of being a little kid. Yeah. But you know, that whole little part of uh, I never, I never told you were a victim. Whatever he says, whatever the line is in the middle of the bridge. But anyway, uh, it, that is that is so Beatles in here. Like he says something, and then you hear like the background vocals. I never said you had to, and that was yeah. like totally I never like said you had to. <laughs> yeah, and and you, like the it was like totally designed for like Lennon and Harrison to be singing background vocals on that. You right. know, <laughs> uh, yeah. Zanzibar. You know, as you know, Zanzibar is my favorite Billy uh, Joel song. Period. Uh, yeah, Stiletto. Right. Zanzibar and Stiletto belong together. There are just two album deep cuts that are so like up to the level of just masterpiece. It's it's up there with all of his best material. Rosalinda's Eyes, a song I wasn't crazy about until I saw it on Freaks and Geeks. Underappreciated song. Half a Mile Away. Should have been a hit. I don't know why that wasn't a fucking hit. It, for some reason, I don't know, all these years later, it always reminded me of um, Don't Stop Me Now from Queen. And I remember when Don't Stop... I remember when Jazz came out. Jazz and 52nd Street came out at the same time. And I remember... We were, uh, me and Eric, we were listening to uh, 52nd Street <clears throat> and uh, what's the album? Oh, yeah, Jazz. And we were both, he had the A-track, so we used to listen to him. And I used to confuse Half a Mile Away with Don't Stop Me Now. Huh. Neither of them have the same beat, but they both have, there, there's something lyrically and melodically that's very similar in both songs. And uh, I can't explain it right now be, because it's just, it's not on the surface of my head, but for the same reasons I love Don't Stop Me Now, I always liked uh, Half a Mile Away. Bohemian Rhapsody kind of made the song a little bit bigger than it was prior to like two years ago. That's maybe a good thing. Uh, Until the Night may be the only possible clunker on the album. And it's a second piece. It's jazz, jazzy, soulful uh, title track, which obviously is always overlooked, but I got to go with 52nd Street. Hmm. My long-winded answer, man. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Mine had more of a personal. Yeah, I just felt my it it, it, it touched me more emotionally because of a, of where I was. And that That'll do it. That'll do it every yeah. time, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now you said, what was your favorite song? It might be your, uh, Zanzibar. Might be your favorite Billy Joel song. Zanzibar is my right? favorite. Bill, Zanzibar is my favorite Billy Joel song. Uh, and it's up on my all-time favorites list too. And with Zanzibar would probably make top twenty-five. Believe it or not, my favorite Billy Joel song is not even one of the classic records. It's, it's I mean, his songs I guess you consider his music. His, all his records kind of classic. It's on Stormfront, Down East or Alexa. I, I remember you I, telling I, me that. I love that song. It's just. Uh, the, the story that he tells, the music. I mean, it sounds like you're on that ship. 
it, it really like you're getting ready to pull in and fuel up in the Long Island Sound, and it just it always makes me feel that way, man. It just I, I just love it. The big it's got like a really big drum sound on it, like a, almost like one of those kettle drums, you know. It, it's, it's thunderous almost, and like it it sounds like a sailing song. It's, I, I love it so much. It reminds me of the whole time period of when that album came out. The most more more so than any song on it. You know, not even uh, we even we didn't start the fire. It's an, it's it's a song that I always liked, man. It's you know, Stormfront wasn't a bad album, man. It wasn't a bad album. Mm-hmm. It, it was, uh, and and I do I do like that song. It was funny because Vanessa was trying to get me to sing uh, Billy Joel like she wanted me to do something different. She's like, do Down Easter Alexa. The so last night we were really out. Good. I'm like, I can't do that song. I was like, get Pat. Ask Pat. You know, she's like, why can't you do the song? Why can't I was like, get Pat. That's his favorite song, man. <laughs> you know, and because uh, I remember you had mentioned it to me uh, a few times. In fact, you may have even said it on the show, man. I probably have. Like, I, you know, he, there's so he, much he shit it. we talked about. Oh yeah, he played it the night that I saw him too, and and it's just, oh man, just tremendous, tremendous song. Oh, so you actually got it live, man. Yeah, yeah, just tremendous song. And I could literally just, you know, it's in my, I, you know, I have a few lists on uh, iTunes, no joke, that, you know, no secret that I use uh, Apple. So I have a bunch of different playlists depending on the mood that I'm in. Some of them are just random shit. But there's one that has that song, and it's a, reg- it's a regular rotated list. And that, that song is definitely on it. I've been listening to a lot of just like, I don't know, you know, when, when Neil Peart, when Neil Peart died, I was listening to a lot of Rush, but I was listening to albums, listening to a lot of Pink Floyd albums. But there's some times when I just want to hear good songs, and and that's on that. But that Billy Joel song is on that list. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'll go really, and, really quick on this one because I know we're pushing time here. No, that's okay. Um, all right, a couple of uh, we we talked about both of these records in our debut album episode. Uh, but we never put them against each other. A nice debut album, 1967 matchup. Are You Experienced or the first Doors album? Jimi Hendrix or the Doors on the debut albums? I'm going to go with the Doors here. Um, I, I, all my guitar player friends are going to kill me. <laughs> uh, all my I might friends back are... you up, man. I might back oh, you up. All my po- all my poetic friends are going to adore me. Um, <laughs> I I just there was something about Jim Morrison when I learned who he was and what the Doors were that I just fell in love with. Um, there was this mystery about Jim. The music was really cool and sometimes carnival esque. Um, a three piece band, you know. I mean, studio wise, they they had other musicians, yeah, but live there was just the three of them. Um, and I just, I don't know, I fell in love with Jim and that mystery and that mystique and the, the lyrics that he, you know, everything, the, the poetic lyrics. I, I did. I was I was just, as a singer, he he was it, man. It was a cross between, I, I wanted a cross between Jim Morrison and David Lee Roth and, you know, try and meet somewhere in the middle of that. And then you got me and it's a fucking really screwed up place to be. But um, I, I'm going to go with the doors just for the sheer, my sheer love of, uh, of Jim Morrison, and I'm not taking anything away from Jimi Hendrix. The man is just brilliant. People still playing his music to this day. He was played a lot. You know, I mean, he was he was turning Beatles songs into hits again, turning Dylan songs into hits. Period. Um, he was funky. <laughs> you know, he was everything you want your musician to be. Everything right. you wanted your musician to be was Jimi Hendrix, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. And arguably one of the greatest players, you know, guitar players that we'll ever know. I'm going to go with the Doors as well, man. Uh, not taking anything away from Jimmy, but uh, Are You Experienced is the best of Are You Experienced. Is, you want to hear it? Turn on FM radio. It's, you'll hear it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, you, that you'll record hear... hasn't aged. That, if I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry, Mike, but that record hasn't aged well sound quality wise. The songs have, the songs are terrific. Sound quality wise, though, it still just sounds. It, it's, it almost sounds flat, in my opinion. It, it I, I know, I know what you mean. His other albums are are better produced. I'd say I, I haven't heard the album in years. I should actually put it on. I mean, I know, I do know what you mean. Every time I hear something off of it, I'm just like, man, it's just, it's, it almost sounds like it's missing something. I mean, maybe because it's just focused on Jimmy, and rightly so. 
I, I don't know, but it, I, I don't know. Maybe just the technology has is, is gotten so much better. Or what about the possibility that, and this this is where uh, so many groups fall into this, you're so used to seeing live footage of him and hearing the best of him live, man, and such explosive footage and live versions of so much of that material that when you hear a studio version, it just sounds tame. Mm. You know, is it, it could be that. I don't know. But uh, I think that's the case with me. But I, with, with Hendrix, man, if the question were Axe as Bold as Love or Electric Ladyland, the situation would be definitely different. I would definitely choose those albums over the Doors. The Doors record, I mean, yeah, is some of the, a lot of it is overplayed on radio. Light My Fire, obviously, Break On Through, um, Alabama Song. But it's the stuff that's in between, Soul Kitchen and The Crystal Ship and uh, I Looked At You, End of the Night, Take It As It Comes. Now I'm reading the list. It's definitely uh, an album that I would, put on and listen beginning to end before I put on uh, Are You Experienced in this case? You know, yeah, Are You Experienced, I think, has a few... I'm glad you went into further detail on all the songs on the record, too. I, I, I kind of wanted to save that and let you and see where your argument went with it, because I, I, I agree with you. On, on, on a front end, I could listen to that and have no issue with it whatsoever. You know, it's going to put you in a mood that you're, yeah. you might not already be in, you want to get to there, whatever it is. And, and plus, like, Axe is Bold as Love, where I think the songs are much better, they're more, they're a lot more fleshed out, they're a lot more... Uh, There's butterflies on that. Butterflies. Uh, butterflies. I'm thinking butterflies and zebras no, and, 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 and the wind. Cra- no, uh, no. There's nothing. There's not anything. There's not like the, that on there. I can't even think of the name of the song right now. It's on the singles. The movie, the sing, uh, singles. It's on that soundtrack. No, I don't know what that is, man. And Electric Ladyland, right one of my favorite albums ever, is Electric Ladyland. But uh, yeah, so I would definitely take the Doors, man. Over yeah. that one, got to go with that. And I had, uh, where am I now? I had a few more. Okay. Uh, right. uh, Blizzard of Oz or Holy Diver? Blizzard. I go uh, Blizzard too. Yeah, Randy Rhodes. Just Randy. All I have to say is Randy Rhodes. <laughs> not, not, to mention, not to mention that I'm an enormous Black Sabbath, Ozzy Osbourne fan. And Blizzard, man, the only thing better than Blizzard was uh, Diary, probably. <laughs> Yeah, I would, I would definitely go with Blizzard. Uh, I wasn't a big, uh, you know, respect to Ronnie James Dio. I was never a big Dio fan. Blizzard, as you know, I, I chose one. I chose that album in my top debut albums. It, it's it's flawless, really, man. It's a, it's a flawless album. It, yeah, it, I, it, I can't it, really go that much further into detail. You know, I mean, obviously, it's Randy Rhodes that makes that album what it is. I don't think there's any any question about that. Right. But nonetheless, it is uh, an Ozzy album. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, and that, I was thinking along the lines of obviously the ob- the obvious uh, ex Sabbath vocalists, their first solo albums away from Sabbath. So that became the choice there. Right. And uh, so my last one is. Uh, this one's inspired by my nephew, who is. Hey, hang on a second. Don't feel rushed. I don't. I want to. I'll explain something to the audience before we got into recording tonight. I was telling Mike, nine o'clock our time, nine p.m. our time. I kind of had to roll by then. Don't feel rushed, though, Mike. I mean, it's not like I'm not set on nine o'clock. Oh my god, I got to get out the door. <laughs> so don't feel set on that. I know you're like, yeah, oh, but real also, quick, real quick. We're yeah, good. <laughs> also, also, the longer the longer the show is, the more I have to edit. So, <laughs> you know, so I, I'm, I'm also thinking, and I'm thinking how, like how how many hours I'm going to be working tonight into tomorrow. So. Oh, you lazy bastard! <laughs> Give the people what they want. I'm, I'm thinking of myself here. You think, you think I care about what you have to do next, man? <laughs> I don't care what love your plans it. are. You plans? It. Fuck your plans, man! I got to work and do this shit. I did have one more though. Uh, my nephew is. I don't know why, man. I mean, I can really trace the origins of it, but I don't. I don't have that kind of desire to do that right now. And, but because it goes back a year since he was a baby, but my nephew, who is six, is totally fucking obsessed with Eddie and Iron Maiden. 
And more so Eddie, more so the Eddie character and all of the album covers and the various different Eddies on each one. And I didn't know this, man, but there's an entire market dedicated to Eddie and Eddie toys, man. I mean, I knew that there were figures when they they released the Eddie figures, but there's so many of them, man, and they all have their nicknames. If I'm not mistaken, Todd McFarlane might have gotten involved and did a line. Uh, a toy line and um, big business, huge business, and the the amount of detail that that goes into them is just I don't have anything like that. A good friend of mine does, and um, not necessarily the Eddie stuff, but the, some of the Todd McFarlane stuff. The amount of detail he has, like some Spawn stuff, and he was a comic book writer, uh, Todd McFarlane. Um, the amount of detail that goes into every single one of these things is mind blowing. You could look, you could pick one up in your hand and look at it and never see I mean you can see you'll never see something twice. It's just unreal. Another friend of mine has a pair of Chucks, the Converse, mm-hmm. um with with Eddie on them and the British flag on the other side. It's yeah, those I've sharp. seen. They are sharp, man. Those I've Good seen. Shoe. So far that's about the only thing that my nephew hasn't asked for. <laughs> that's that's fantastic. Too. You know, like every day, man. So like the next, you know, like the next package comes in the mail. Is is my uh is is is, is somewhere in time coming today? Is somewhere in time coming today? I'm getting you know, like like he knows all of the he, legacy of the beast, man, and like all these all these things, man. Like 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 the tour, man. Legacy of the beast. That was never a record, you know. But he knows legacy of the beast. You know, he knows uh, Book of Souls. He's like, that's Book of Souls, Eddie. That's, uh, you know, No Prayer for the Dying, Eddie. That's Fear of the Dark, Eddie. That's uh, Somewhere in Time, Eddie. You know, and he just knows them from the album covers, and he's and he matches them to the, to the album title. And uh, so, yeah, it's kind of... It's kind of strange, man, seeing wow. these, these Maiden records that we grew up on over 30 years ago. Albums that I had gotten, man, some stuff that I bought with, like, allowance money from, like, mowing the lawn in, like, 1983, <laughs> you know, that I still have that he's now obsessed with. So it's, it's, it's crazy, man. Uh, and he's finally, first it was all about Eddie. And just like Eddie was just like this comic book thing, like this cartoon that he drew pictures of and that he played with. And yeah. now he's finally getting into the music. So now he's there and he's playing air guitar to Power Slave and he knows the songs on Power Slave and he's into, I mean, he's getting into it. It's, it's crazy. He's six years old, man. He's in, he's in kindergarten. But anyway, with that, my question is peace of mind or Power Slave? Man, this is... T- Peace of mind. Peace, now, peace of mind is you die, with your boots, die with your boots. Die with your boots. might be one of my favorite songs by them. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> um. So, oh man, son of a bitch. I, I'm gonna go with that just because it has my favorite song on it. Power yeah, Slave I go with that. Another too. great solid record, though, man. I go uh, peace of mind Flight, too. Man. Flight of Icarus too, though, isn't that? That's on it too. So I'm gonna go. Yeah. Yeah, Flight is on on Peace of Mind. The Troopers on Peace of Mind. Yeah, uh, yeah. Re- Revelation, my favorite oh, song, yeah, yeah, is on there. Yeah. Still Life is on there. Uh, Sun and Steel is on there. Wow, well, we both um, agree on that one. That was yeah, that was Peace wild, of Mind, dude. definitely Peace of Mind. Power Slave, great album. I found that if I had to go song for song, well, we immediately stop at Lost for Words. Is that instrumental third song on the album? It's a clunker. Yeah. Why is it there? It shouldn't have been yeah. on there. And I was never crazy about Back in the Village. So as far as I'm concerned, Power Slave has two holes. And there are, you know, there's great, great material on Power Slave. Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, the, the title track, Ace is High, Two Minutes to Midnight, Flash of the Blade, The Duelist. But, you know, it was, I mean, there are two holes as far as, as is my opinion. Peace of Mind has one clunker. That's Quest for Fire. It sounds cartoonish. It sounds ridiculous. It's the most ridiculous lyrics, I think. Uh, this side of Spinal Tap, man. It's, uh, but yeah, peace of mind. It's my favorite Iron Maiden record. I think it's probably their best record. But. I like um, a favorite record by them. Another one takes me to a specific time in my life. Is it might have been somewhere in time. Yeah, man. I, Great. I really, I, really dig that record. We listened to that about two weeks ago. We were we were on a thing like after school because we do this thing we where we do online school in the morning. And then in the afternoon, we you know he gets his Eddie time, 
Right. <laughs> you know, it's called Eddie time. <laughs> you know, that's that's his choice, man. He's like, that's what he wants to fucking do, man. He wants to, he's like, can't, when we're done with school, can we go listen to Iron Maiden? I'm like, you sure can, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? the, only, the, only better, the, the, only, the, the only way that question gets better is if, it would be two things. Can we go listen to Kiss? Can we go listen to Dylan? <laughs> Mike might explode. <laughs> yeah, he's not ready for he's not ready for Bob, man. Bob is like you know, Bob is like Bob is like high school, man. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, but that would be the only thing that would be better coming out of his mouth would be he wants to go have Bob time or Kiss time. What he's gonna Dylan? Have Dylan, Dylan is Dylan is like fully appreciated, man. Like you know, I well, if you're human, man, <laughs> you know that's why that's why Bruce, man, so many songs that people can relate to, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, but yeah, hey, I, I, will, you, I will leave Bob out of the picture for now. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Hey, did you see? Um, speaking of Bruce, did you watch the Netflix uh, his Broadway show? Yeah, I did see that. I I saw that when it when it was. What, uh, I don't know if we did. Did we discuss it? What, what were your thoughts on it? I enjoyed it tremendously. I don't remember talking about that uh, I don't with either. too many people, man. But uh, yeah, it was. I mean, it was so many everything we love Bruce. I love about Bruce, man. In that, uh, I, I I mean, it, it's I I I can't I can't relate to. The Bruce hatred of you know the, I I, right. I just watch that watch that how could you there's emotion how there. could you say that you hate Bruce Springsteen and Bruce Springsteen sucks and and then what come out of that man you're not fucking human man <laughs> you know you know you come you, out of that you know whose opinion that show changed Howard Stern actually got tickets to that show he went with uh, Jimmy Kimmel <clears> and com- and completely changed his uh, take on Bruce Springsteen um, yeah yeah. The, a couple of big parts that stuck out. One was obvious, and that was um, when he talked about Clarence. It was just touching to see him talk about him like that. It, it was it was cool to see. And as always, you see him do 10th Avenue freeze out. You know, the change was made up town when the big man joined the band and the place erupts. Still, the man's been dead for how many years now? God rest his soul. Yeah. And still, you know what I mean? The place still goes fucking batshit crazy when he sings yeah. that line, man. And he lets them do it, too. He that, yeah, that, yeah. that was his good goddamn friend who passed away and bandmate for fucking so long. Um, yeah. and, the, and the other thing that, that, that I think, you know, he kind of joked about, it. he's like, I wasn't the working man. I watched my dad be the working man. You know what I mean? And it was just, yeah. it, it was, you know, he, that, that it makes me understand growing up, the song growing up by him more by that statement. He didn't do it in the show, but that that it made me understand that a little bit more. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it just it really did because he was off playing fantasy stuff and you know taking the spaceships to the stratosphere and this and that and the other thing. But his dad was that blue collared guy that everybody thinks Bruce is, and he's like, "That's not me. <laughs> I got a kick out of that. Man. <laughs> that wasn't me. I didn't want to work. I wanted to play this guitar for my life." You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh man. I have another shout out, man. I want I want to throw another fan shout out cuz uh, you know, last I wonder week we, I wonder if your shout out is the same as mine. Go ahead. I I think it's going to be Vic Vic Goley. Um I the guy's a number uh, again, a, a guy who's just been with us from the beginning. Always voices his his concerns with the show, his opinions with the show. Did we suck? Did we not suck? He's uh he's been a driving force in some stuff that we might have talked about on occasion. Um yeah, Vic, Vic is up there with Rob as well, man. And, they don't and, sometimes, that and guy. sometimes Vic is the only motherfucker who responds, man. The yeah. only person to respond. I, I, like, sometimes we'll put stuff out there, and then finally after, like, a day or two, man, you'll see, like, one hit, and then you'll look, and it's always Vic. So yeah. he's, you know, he supports, man. He, yeah, he is there, you know. Where, uh, where, where Rob released our show early to the masses, Vic. Thanks, Rob. A big, yeah, thanks, Rob. Vic is very he- very heavy on our social media platforms, and uh, yep. you know, again, I want to throw in those shout out. I, I might make this uh, try and make this a weekly or bi weekly thing. Um, just throwing a shout out to, to a, a fan or something like that who always has, has some great things to say and yeah. great conversation starters, great support. Obviously, I, I want to thank you all. Every single person gets a shout out for that for the support factor. I'm not taking anything away from Vic because that I, is my shout out of the week. I have got. Um... I've got two shout outs to our friends uh Vanessa and Laura who continue to repost 
and promote us as if it's their own gig, you know. Uh, you know, we know who has stuck by us. You know, those people are never lost on us. So, uh, but those two get a shout out this week. But yeah, you know, I guess, uh, you know, I, I just want to thank everybody who supports the podcast. We do we do this as a labor of love. You know, we're, we're definitely, we definitely don't do it for the money, Pat. <laughs> you know, it's, it's always nice to know that. Uh, I'd be quarantined you know, on a fucking island by now if we did it for the money. <laughs> yeah, man. But, you know, people, I guess people, hopefully people are finding some sort of uh, solace or, 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 you know, comfort, if you will, in the distraction that these shows offer. I, I hope so too. Um, you know, you're, you're, we also got to thank you, me being a listener as well as a co-host. You know, your labor of love and, and, and uh, of the show and, and doing what you do behind the scenes. You know, the man behind the curtain, more or less. And um, you know, it just it feels good again. I, you know, I got that vibe last week when I listened to the show. I was like, wow, we 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 it, we weren't stepping on each other. We sounded, you know, like we had some stuff to say, and it just I. I I finished recording it with you, and I was just like, wow, that, that went well. I can't wait to hear that. And I haven't felt like that in a long time. Right? And I yeah. Think you, right. I, I think you would agree with that. Because we haven't done it in a long time. Right, so right, right. Needed, yeah. it, it, you know, you, you get uh, – sometimes you need the distance. Yeah. You know, and, in I mean, order we to – We were getting a little complacent. Maybe, eh, I don't think we were complacent in – I don't know. I, you mean like towards the uh, – well, the show was still going on, like in the end of the – Yeah. Yeah, like towards our last few shows, you know, when we kind of put it, we didn't put it to rest, but when we kind of just stepped aside for a little bit and just to well, catch our breath a little. Bit. I had, I had, um, see, I didn't know going into the last one. I mean, uh, we're going back to, I had a really, really shitty end of 2018 with mm-hmm. so much shit, just layers and layers of bullshit. Uh, in the end of 2018 personally and just things going on at the same time like three or four or five really really shitty things going on at the same time so the podcast was kind of like by the time we did that well by the time we did that christmas episode i was just like thank god (laughs) (laughs) for a couple months you know but then we we got together again where we did two or three episodes of that where we started to get back into it and Marissa was joining us and i want to call Marissa because i want to get you know i want to do i want to have some conversations with Marissa. Well, you know, we can merge. Too. We can merge the calls to where the three yeah. could be on. I, I, I would hope so. But yeah, at that point, I just that's where it was gonna. I was just like, how are we gonna continue this? Because I, I, I was just like, well, I didn't have anything to talk about. Yeah. You know, I didn't have. It was just like I, I was, I was hurting for topics. It just wasn't a good period. Yeah, so, um, you know, I mean, sometimes you need the distance from that. And, uh, I mean, even now, you know, I mean, had this had this whole thing not happened, you know, we probably wouldn't be doing this, obviously. You know, we wouldn't have, you know, we got the... Uh, I don't know about that, because we had some discussions, albeit brief, and, and you know, Rob got involved in a couple of conversations with us, and there, there were, we were tinkering around a little bit there. Would it have happened as quickly? Maybe not. Mm-mm. I can agree. That's with what I mean. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But we were we were getting there. Yeah. You know, we were starting to chisel away at each other, if you will. Yeah. Because my priority has been to to finish the book. Yeah. And get it out there. It, it'll be out hopefully in the fall. It's going to be an ebook. That's about all I'm, you know, ready to talk about at this point. But yeah, I mean, it, it was something that did take up a lot of my time. And um, when it got to the point where I wasn't happy with the shows. And then I was sitting down at a uh, at a computer to to mix and edit a, a, an hour show that took me you know six hours to do and for you know I just was not in it anymore my heart wasn't in it anymore and I was just I don't I, I don't want to do this yeah you know it's not that I don't want to do it I just don't want to do it now so you know it was just kind of you know we just the, the thing just kind of fell away man. And, yeah. So you know it is what it is, and here we are having this discussion. You know, and people are people will hear this, I guess. I don't know that I'll even keep this part in the show, but <laughs> maybe I'll edit this out. You know, no, uh, don't edit it out. We're, they're, we're, they're part of our family, man. They, they can yeah. hear what you know. They can hear that all. I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. Bring us closer. Get them to hear a little, a uh, little bit from the inner sanctum of the Rock Under Fire halls. 
so that's basically it. You know, it's it's uh, we have a lot of the same people that still support us. That's good. They, you know, uh, again, you you could tell the people that you know do appreciate what we do. Yes. You know, I mean, and there are a lot of people that listen on, you know, I, what was iTunes, I guess, is now Apple Podcasts, yep. and listening on Spotify and people, a lot of numbers because our YouTube numbers are low. Like I look at our YouTube hits and our, our YouTube hits are, are so low. Uh, compared to the other numbers, and so I don't, I don't know who's listening on Apple, but I look at, you know, I look at the uh, the statistics, yeah. and you know, so we are we're we got downloads all over the world, man. And again, our numbers are small. We have a very very small audience, but we do have people who listen. So uh, it's good to know that there are people out there listening. So, you know, that this 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 does not go unappreciated to you people out there who do listen. I don't know who you are. We may never meet any of you. But uh it's it's technology is a weird thing, man. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. just, you know, where you and me are having this conversation and then within the next 48 hours it's going to be accessible to, you know, World. somebody out in Germany or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So, yeah. it's it's kind of cool. It's it's weird. But you know what? I'm. I, I think I'm finally at peace with it. It's it's a good thing. But, awesome. Uh, so yeah. So uh, I guess we're trying out this new weekly pattern until further notice. Again, we've been out of commission for the better part of the year. So at this point, we can say that we're back for now. But I'll tell you what. If you're listening, and I'll wrap this up really quick. Uh, we need your input if you listen. So please leave us your comments. Leave us comments anywhere you can, whether it be on YouTube, on Facebook, whatever it is. Leave us comments on what you'd like to hear discussed on the show. We're gonna we're gonna stay. We're gonna remain a blank canvas for discussion in the coming weeks. So your ideas, your input, is always welcome and encouraged. So you know, all right, Mikey D here, Pat Ivanisky. That's our show this week. Much love to everybody out there, and uh, be safe. Mike, be safe. Peace.